good morning. It is Monday, September the 20th, and we uh, spent a couple of days at the KOA just getting a video out, edited, and uh, doing our laundry, getting caught up on uh, everything, and now we are headed through Cottonwood Pass, continuing to work our way westward, southwest. All right, we just left this morning, and uh, Carol asked if we could pull over because the um, dandy was feeling like it was swaying all over the place. It wasn't feeling right, so we went and looked, and it uh, looks like the sway bar got disconnected. The pin fell out, so we're just going to take a look, see if we can get it fixed up here. Here's a rock over there. I tried pushing down on this, Dad. Do you want to try linking it back up? Yeah, I'm going to get a rock and that hopefully will lift it up a bit so we can get that attached. Should be lots of rocks in the bush there. Once we got the sway bar back in place, we hit the road again and continued heading up Cottonwood Pass. The Colorado BDR Trail is absolutely beautiful and scenic, both on and off the paved road. Though we are excited to get back on the dirt trails, these mountain views and fall colors all around us are breathtaking. Since Cottonwood Pass is a paved section of the Colorado BDR, it is accessible for any vehicle and will take you through some epic scenery. We stopped briefly to admire the view and let Lando stretch his legs at the summit of Cottonwood Pass, which is at an elevation of 12,126 feet above sea level. are just as beautiful coming down the pass, but we are glad to be turning back onto the unpaved trails again. Just got through the pass, I guess, uh, just coming over the other side, and the uh, BDR trail cut off onto the dirt. So we're back on the dirt, which is uh, what we prefer, over paved, of course. And we're just gonna pull over, right, Lando? <laughs> We're just going to pull over, let Lando stretch his legs and make some uh, quick lunch and then carry on down the trail. Got a bit of brisket going, just heating it up with pickles and onions, Texas style. I'm going to take off my side panniers and go through there again.
pretty deep. Should be fun though. Welcome to Historic Tin Cup. All properties privately owned. Wow! This is really cool. This is an old uh, village. Tin Cup is an old historic mining town at an elevation of 10,157 feet above sea level. The town was started by a group of prospectors around 1860. The story goes that the prospectors' horses got loose while camping overnight, and when they discovered them near a stream the next morning, one of the men took his tin cup and scooped up some of the gravel from the stream and saw evidence of gold. As the original prospectors went off to fight in the Civil War, plans to develop the area were interrupted until they returned later in the 1860s. In the 1870s, miners began to pour into the area. Tin Cup Camp was officially named Virginia City until 1882 when the town changed it to Tin Cup because the Postal Service back then was getting confused with two other Virginia cities they were working with in Nevada and Montana. Tin Cup has experienced two major fires in its history that impacted the small town. The first was in 1906, and the second in 1913. The fire of 1906 destroyed a full block of South Washington Street. Fortunately, through both fires, the historic Town Hall building survived unharmed. The Town Hall was built in 1903 and became the center for community gatherings. Currently, the year-round population of Tin Cup is three people, but it grows by several dozen during the summer months. After seeing some of the beautiful little historic town of Tin Cup, we move on down the trail to Cumberland Pass. One of the best things about overlanding is discovering historic areas like old mines, ranches, and ghost towns. We always take time to learn about and remember the hardworking and tenacious settlers who came before us helping to build this great country. lies ahead and will be the highest pass we have driven over so far on the Colorado BDR Trail. Right. 
We're just outside of Tin Cup and we're heading up in, up to the top of the pass here. We're at 11,000 feet. This, this awesome trail here has taken us high up over the mountains. So I'm not sure how what elevation this pass is going to be at, but it's uh, it's a nice climb. at the top of the mountain you can actually drive further up there off the road but this is Cumberland Pass 12,015 feet we made it isn't this amazing this is awesome what a view this is the top of the mountain pretty spectacular The sun is beginning to set, and after a long day of driving on the trail, we are looking for a spot to camp for the night. always to see these uh, the remnants of these old mines that are just uh, gets the imagination going you know <clears throat> thinking back to the day when uh, folks lived up here in the wild, in the wild by themselves you know without all the comforts we have and getting uh, getting gold out of the earth so let's go take a walk amazing eh? yeah. it's a big old uh, mine operation super cool all those cabins back there and then just looked a little further up and there's this whole thing it's amazing you see the old concrete foundations obviously all the old buildings those look like they would have been shafts that got buried possibly it's really cool
looks like a nice little campground uh, run by the state. Camping is uh, 10 bucks. There's nobody here. It's a beautiful spot. Uh, I think we're gonna spend the night here. And Beaver Dam. <laughs> yeah, that's a good spot. Beautiful canyon. That's the trail, the road we were on. It's, it's very quiet during the day, let alone at night. So I think we have a beautiful spot. And your loud fires here. Sun's here, put that out when you're gone. That's Is funny. anything better than a chimichanga? I don't know, nothing sounds better. So you, you either have a wrap or you have a chimichanga. What is that looking for? Oh yeah, mom, do you have bread? Why did, did you someone mention chimichangas? Because I dreamed of that. Mama did it. yesterday. <laughs> Yum, yum, yum. Good pork chimichangas. Good morning, guys. Frost on the ground this morning. We're up in the mountains here in Colorado at about 10,000 feet. And uh, yeah, it's chilly. I'm just getting some coffee going for me and Carol. And uh, we're going to sit in the front of the Jeep with the heat on and warm up. <laughs> it's just one of those mornings. You can see we've been using our uh, jet boil lately. Uh, we, we can still, of course, heat water up or boil water on the stove, but the jet boil is so fast. We forgot we had it. We we used it. We bought it actually just before we went to New Zealand, and we pretty much only use it when we're hiking. But it's coming handy on these cold mornings if you want to get your water boiling real fast. One of those jet boils is the way to do it. Also, just want to mention again, Adventure Roast, our coffee is now available in Canada. Go to the EFRT store, effortstore.ca for the Canadian distribution and effortstore.com for the rest of the US. It's great coffee, we, we drink it every morning. Uh, we've now got lots of people buying it and giving us their reviews and they love it. So uh, we're excited about that. And it helps out the channel, helps us keep producing great family content for you to watch. And so, yeah, if you enjoy coffee, check out effortcoffee.com, EFRTcoffee.ca, and get yourself a bag or two of Adventure Roast. That is good. Nice and warm in the front here. <laughs> the comforts of home.
right, we're back on the road. We had a great sleep here at the camp spot, and uh, it got really chilly last night. It was below freezing, uh, minus two Celsius, and uh, 30 degrees Fahrenheit. We've got a long trail ahead of us, and no fuel stations in sight. And now both Carol and I have our our main tanks are about quarter or half and we've also got our auxiliary tanks full so we're good the boys are getting low on fuel and we have an auxiliary on the back of Vandy that AEV uh, fuel caddy and it comes with a, a little siphon hose and for some reason we've misplaced that siphon hose we tore both Jeeps apart this morning we cannot find it we're hoping we didn't accidentally throw it out but that's the only way to get fuel from the caddy into the boys bikes so they're driving on fumes right now we're gonna see how far we can get and if they run out we're gonna to have to get really creative uh, <laughs> and find a way to pump fuel from the caddy to their bikes or Pete was saying maybe even we'll have to rig up something and dip a cup in there I don't know luckily the bikes don't require a lot of fuel they can go a long ways on a, on a gallon of fuel so uh, hoping for the best and just pressing on and we'll see what happens Luckily, along the trail is the small town of Pitkin, where the boys could fuel up their bikes. Yeah. Saved by the gas station. Yep. Not sure how much fuel I had left, but uh, it's pretty much running on fumes. I wonder if they sell cinnamon buns. Smells like it. We also stopped in to get snacks and a few supplies at the Silver Plume General Store. So we got fuel here at Pitkin and what a gorgeous little town. Yeah, it's amazing. What a beautiful little town, uh, right up high elevations at 9,000 feet, log cabins everywhere. We stopped at the general store. If you ever get a chance to get up here, you go to the general store. Um, they have food in the summer and this time of year it's just on the weekends but uh, the smell up here is amazing fresh air and then you've got people with their wood stoves going and oh, we're loving it picking this is a place we'll come back to for sure The route today is breathtaking as we drive through the colorful aspen trees, vast sections of open range, and unique rock formations.
All right, sometimes you find locked gates. This one in between July and September, they have cattle grazing in here. So you go through, you close it behind you and off you go. We'll carry on. As the sun began to set over the distant mountains, we settle into a beautiful camp spot among the vibrant yellow aspen trees and the fresh, cool mountain air. Stay tuned for next week's episode of the Epic Family Road Trip as we head higher into the mountains of Colorado and find ourselves challenged on narrow shelf trails, high elevations, and no room for mistakes. <laughs>